uh, the teaching according to conditions by using provisional teachings. Uh, so that's what it is. So the provisional provision teaching is not the ultimate teaching that one that would have wanted to teach uh, because of the condition and the capabilities. Um, so condition and the capabilities um, for the Buddha was to provide provisional teachings. But that provisional teaching doesn't mean it's, it's not about the truth, but it's not about the, the full Dharma that he wanted to do. So the leap into the uh, Dharma, the truth, um, the, the use, the uh, skillful means to teach uh, the small vehicle and the middle vehicle, uh, do so when a meaning is still within, it's very profound. And this is requires the skillful language to teach. So if you recall that some time back, I mentioned that the words, you see, worldly words are meant to describe worldly things. Worldly words were never constructed to describe uh, non-worldly things because it will never be understood. So that's the reason why when we listen to Dhamma, we need to listen to the essence of the words or the truth of those words. And it will require contemplation to realize uh, the essence of the words which are contained in that. So in Master's explanation, he said that learning the Buddha's way, it's inseparable from skillful means. So in other words, not only that you learn the truth, um, but got to learn together with the skillful means. So in the 10th ground, Bodhisattva the Master has mentioned, uh, one of the uh, either level, I think, is the seventh ground. The seventh ground, it's about skillful means attaining that level. So even at the Bodhisattva level, you're talking about the seventh ground, you know, only reach that, that level of skillful means that one is able to attain. So therefore, it's a very, very, obviously, it's a very high level of practice. So we are still adhering to the principles as we use various methods to explain the Dharma. So the, the, no, there's no deviation on the principles of the Dharma, but the way the method being used um, will be adapted according to the condition and the capabilities of the people. So therefore, the uh, principles are not uh, too profound and uh, easy for people to understand. So we teach according to the principles and so without compromising the truth of those words. And this requires skillful language. So then when Master went on to explain about, uh, this is just a reminder of the 37 requisites of enlightenment. And um, the Master said, <clears throat> he already covered the four right efforts, <clears throat> the four basis of fulfilling power and the four for mindfulness. So this, the 12 out of the 37, uh, 37 practices to enlightenment, or the, sometimes referred to as the 37 factors of enlightenment, or the 37 requisites of enlightenment. So the four right efforts are uh, two, two of the wholesome uh, thoughts, uh, whatever, or wholesome that has not a reason, allows it to arrive to a root. And one which already has reason, a wholesome thought which already reason, maintain it. Uh, unwholesome thought hasn't arisen it, um, prevent it. Wholesome thought, which has already arisen, maintain it. And then the four basis of fulfilling power um, is about aspiration, the effort of thought, and the wisdom or the investigative wisdom um, that we would be very, be very mindful of. Then the fourfold mindfulness um, is to remember that the um, one is the body is impure feelings of suffering and the mind is impermanent and the phenomena is without self. And so these are uh, of the 12. So uh, there are, um, there's another five, uh, five set, we call the five spiritual faculties or power. And then there's five spiritual strength plus the noble evil part that will add up all to 37. So we must also quickly eliminate the evil. And that's why you're saying this, for right efforts, including the fulfilling power and the mindfulness. And to prevent evil, there's not reason from arising. And this is what our efforts is. It's, so before and even the evil thought arises, uh, we need to prevent it from happening. So therefore, in doing so, we refrain from all the evils. We all do good deeds. And this is the teaching of, of the Buddha. 
So as we learn the Buddha's way, uh, must a reminder us that we must not look down on skillful means that they are the true Dharma. So one, one who is able to express the Dharma, to inspire others, um, that requires skillful means. So good words, not just good deeds, good words and good deeds, and um, we'll create an endless cycle in the end, lead them to understand um, the path for people to get out of samsara. So no matter what efforts they use in the end, we can come together with the path and the true principles. So next, the lessons learned. So with skillful means, the Buddha patient may talk based on principles. So do so by adapting conditions. So in very much the same way as we walk the path and we share the Dharma uh, with people, uh, we need to be able to um, uh, understand their thoughts. But if the mind is already closed, it's extremely difficult um, to do so. Because if you push for it, instead of doing them any good, you actually you push them away and that will even uh, close their mind off from listening. And they, so this got to be very, very mindful uh, of, the, of this. And there are many types of people out there. So therefore, we um, got to be uh, uh, careful of the condition they are in and the mindset they are in. I mean, for example, one who is suffering and a great deal, uh, how can you just go jump in and say, let me explain to you about the Dharma? Because it, they, if the body is already suffering in great pain, how can one understand the Dharma well? And it's important to appreciate that even for ourselves in practice. So therefore, keeping our body healthy is necessary. A good body is necessary before you can have a good mind. Only with a good mind, you can be able, able to discern uh, the Dharma. So in contemplation, uh, I try to pick up from my... Uh, my uh, spiritual con diary, if you like, um, to relating to this. And uh, this was done a few years ago. And um, so this is a little bit long, but it relates to what it is uh, teaching today. The understanding of the path of practice may be profound, but your thoughts must be simple. So you see, in contemplation, we get to go learn to understand and the profundity of the, of the teaching. But it's important that the thoughts must be simple because if the thoughts is simple, then the words can be expressed um, in a way that is simple. And simplicity in profundity is a skillful means because, um, and, and it's, it's, a, it's a skill uh, to be expressed in very simple words. So speak words that are simple, yet profound that one understands. Then the benevolent deeds are skillful means for you to connect with others as you serve. So with skillful means you can serve efficaciously so that you do, you do just um, so that you do to, to, to elevate their pains that they are inspired to help themselves out of sufferings. So uh, I miss out the word not, so that you do not just elevate their pain, but they are inspired to help others out of suffering. And that is what uh, we should uh, be doing. So on relationship, it's just a one-liner, um, a very simple um, relationship that skillfully stir a disagreement into a dialogue for the congruence of minds. Okay, that's all I have today. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Raj.